today we're going to catch up with Anne Boleyn. She's had a bit of bad news and she wants to tell us about it. I have watched this video now three times, so I am going to try to get through this as quickly as possible and fast forward a lot of her talking because I've had enough. Anyways, let's go. So welcome to a new video. So I know that I have not been uploading much. I have not been vlogging, nothing like that. I just, mental moments, okay? Right, so I don't hate Anne Boleyn. I'm not a massive fan, but I can still see that she's not an awful person. And I appreciate the fact that when she is having bad moments that she doesn't come on to YouTube and go on live or whatever and just look for attention because I think she could easily do that. And with these new people that are following her now from um, a video that was shared like a month or so ago, it seems she probably could benefit from that financially, definitely, I think, with Super Chats, but she doesn't, um, at least not at this particular point. So I do respect her for that at least and actually just taking a breather and taking a step back unlike some people we know working on myself moments and youtube has always been a priority for me i kind of talked about this in my last video where i would come on youtube even when i literally just felt like i couldn't even crawl out of bed to breathe i couldn't even crawl out of bed to brush my teeth and i would still be on youtube and i would just look miserable you guys have seen me look pretty miserable it's those times where i didn't choose myself and i finally said you know what i am choosing myself and i'm not going to be on camera when i literally don't even know how to function as an adult I hit a little low. Um, I got some bad news, has been some things kind of surfacing in my brain and things that I have to like absorb and process myself. And then I got some bad news with my last dietitian visit. And um, this is a video just like updates and such. So I'm gonna fast forward over to this bit because it's just really, I don't know why she left it in to be honest. She basically tells us about the fact that she started a multivitamin that she was recommended by the uh, diet dietitian because I can't speak English either today apparently. And um, so she's trying them and she's really scared of medicines and she doesn't usually like it. And she's worried that she was gonna OD on vitamins, which is why she put it off, but she's taken it and she really feels a difference. That's basically it. So um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll keep that cut out for you so you don't have to fall asleep watching it. So I have gotten questions. I'm not wearing my Fitbit right now because it is charging. I have gotten questions though about like, how are you getting your steps in? She now starts talking about how she gets her steps in. She says that she's doing about 4,000 a day. She walks around her island while she's watching all these stupid TLC shows and um, also parking far away from the shop when she goes is helping her as well so yeah i won't make you listen to all of that so i have an update on my adhd as you guys know i feel like i have it i am almost positive i have it my psychiatrist thinks i have it so um she recommended me to get seen for that and i was waiting for a phone call to be evaluated on the phone to even see if i should go to the further steps of being assessed which are two completely different things and i officially had the phone call to be evaluated and i said yes it does sound like you have it so i'm on the schedule to be assessed but it goes all the way up until like five months from now. I guess a lot of people think they have ADHD and it's very common, but I'm not gonna be seen to even be assessed for like under five months. So this really pissed me off because um, so she's got away five months. I understand five months is a long time. She is in such a privileged situation that she can afford to get this looked at and hopefully afford to get treated. Um, as somebody in the UK currently, sorry to just like make it all about me for a second, but as someone in the UK currently, the NHS is really struggling and um, I'm actually in the same position. I'm waiting to be seen for ADHD and I've been told it will be two to seven years until I can get seen. And I can't tell you how much that has affected my mental health. So I can understand why she's very upset about this situation. Um, but I really think she needs to kind of look at how lucky she is and how many things she's able to actually afford because of what YouTube or like what YouTube money allows her to. I just, um, it's just really frustrating to see her getting pissed off about something that really isn't a big deal. And when she really should be focusing on her health in other respects. So that is crazy. I was not expecting that, but I know some of you have been asking about that. So I wanted to let you guys know revolving like my weight loss and like my way of eating and weight loss surgery and stuff. There's going to be a big change that's happening. And I'm sure there's going to be a big part of you who, Oh, I saw this coming. Typical in Berlin. There's going to be another part of you guys who are like, Oh, okay. I get this. I understand. But I feel like it's only going to be a tiny, tiny, bit, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of you guys. Um, some of you are probably gonna be shocked. Absolutely shocked. Um, but I have to do what is right for me. So as you'll see, I'll sped this up as much as I can. Um, and I will talk about what she said after she said her part. So let me explain first. So I do officially have a dietitian. Um, to get weight loss surgery, you have to see a dietitian and have to get approved by the dietitian to get weight loss surgery. So one thing that is very important when you go to get weight loss surgery, because you are literally changing your anatomy, you are changing like your hormones, the way your body works, um, your stomach, like it is being taken out. I mean, obviously they leave some stomach, but a lot is happening. It changes your whole anatomy and it's a big change physically, mentally, all of it. So you have to be honest. You have to be honest with everything. And seeing a dietitian and seeing a psychologist, I was very, very upfront and honest. I have been diagnosed with binge eating in the past. So with the psychologist, um, he was able to see that I was past that stage of my life. And I was diagnosed with binge eating um, about a year ago. And since then, I have seen a psychologist for a year. A lot has changed since then when it comes to like uh, my mentality and what I consider binge and the whole thing. You guys have seen that firsthand. Um, I showed you guys a binge. I think it was in December and you guys were like, that's just a normal meal. Um, the psychologist said, you know, binging is eating three times what you normally would as a person, not what is a normal amount to eat as a person, but you 
what, what is your normal? And I don't do that. <laughs> that I don't do. I overeat, sure, but I never eat three times or four times the amount that I normally would eat. When I watch Six Hour Fun Life and they show what they're eating, I've never ate that much in one sitting. And they go, they see doctor now. A lot of them, which are my favorite stories, um, they're successful and they lose the weight. And in like two months, three months, they get the surgery. I've never in my life ate that much in one sitting. That's why I feel like the show exaggerates. But if they're not exaggerating, fine, I'm sorry. I have not what I consider binged. I have not since somewhere in December. This whole uh, January, February, we're fixing to be in March. I have not ate in a binging manner. I have been doing really good. I have been losing weight. And not only have I been working on that aspect, but I've been working on like my mental more and just, I've been actively choosing these coping mechanisms that my psychologist taught me all of last year. And I had my dietitian appointment and she told me, this is gonna be hard to hear, but if you are trying to get weight loss surgery, this is within their program, every program is different. If you are trying to get weight loss surgery with this program, you have to go a full year. 365 days without one binge. That, it like broke me. This is the second time I've seen this dietitian. Um, I guess from this point forward, um, I'm gonna see the dietitian once a month. And my next appointment's already scheduled, so I've already seen her twice. She said the improvements I'm making is amazing and she's proud and I'm going in the right direction, et cetera, et cetera. But she said, I cannot get weight loss surgery for a year. I immediately broke down and I have been so confused where I'm just like, do I wanna share this with YouTube? Do I want to share with them the horribly emotionally just painful side to this? Do I wanna put a mask on? Do I just wanna seem nonchalant? Do I want to go into detail? I have just been all over the place. And that is why it has taken me a little bit of time to share this because that tore me. Like it, it tore me. Um, I, I don't know what it was, <laughs> but I immediately had a breakdown in front of the dietitian. I, I couldn't control it. It was like my insides exploded and I just, I cried. And it just felt like another obstacle, another thing to just get in the way because I have been doing everything to get the surgery. I have gotten people messaging me saying, how are you getting through this process so quickly? I've been doing this for months and I'm not even as far along as you. I have been just like, I wanted the surgery before summer. I did. Since I'm self-pay, that would have been manageable. But since I have been diagnosed with an eating disorder, it's not manageable and it's not possible. And it hurts. And it just, it instantly put me in this like weird headspace where I was just like, this isn't fair. They eat way more than I do in one thing. Why are they able to get the surgery? Why do we have to wait a year? I think it's triggering and it brings up like past trauma for me where it just seems like no matter what I do, no matter what I try, there's always an obstacle and a roadblock. And last time this happened was when the psychologist said, you can't get surgery for like two years. And I, I was like, ah, you know, and I didn't care as much then, not, not even remotely close to how much I care now. And I gave up, I gave up. No matter how much work I do now, it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna matter. All the tests I did, it doesn't matter. And it just, I don't know, it's just like disheartening and it hurts. And I feel myself wanting to slip into bad routine. I feel like, I don't know what to do with myself. What do I do for this year? I. I just feel like everything was just kind of ripped, ripped away from me. Right, I wanted her to have her chance to kind of say what's going on. Um, but as usual, it just really frustrates me because she is not seeing the bigger picture. How long has she been trying to lose weight now? And she's pissed off because it's going to be... So, okay, so she hasn't been since December. So she's effectively got another 10 months until they can start booking her in. What the fuck is 10 months compared to what she's been through? All the diets she's been through, everything she's tried and failed at. If she's really that confident in herself that she's going to be able to do this, then 10, 10 months is nothing. To think that you've got to wait another 10 months and then maybe like this time next year, for example, she could be starting like her new life effectively. And I don't understand why she's so frustrated and why she doesn't get it. But the thing that is crazy about this is the fact that she's like, oh God, it's 10 months. There's so many chances for me to fail and so many chances, um, you know, for me to binge. That's the exact reason they're not letting you do this now, because you are mentally still not at the point that you need to be at. You've even said how dangerous it is if you were to binge after you've had this operation. So I don't understand why you're surprised by this. And the fact that the idea of spending another 10 months doing what you've been currently doing or what you said you've been doing, you know, i.e. Uh, more steps and eating healthier and not binging. If you can't imagine doing that for another 10 months, then how the fuck are you going to do that for the rest of your life? I've had to talk to the dietitian. I've had to talk to Feline. I've had to talk to um, people in my life who are close to me. And I've had to talk to myself and really absorb, like, what do I do now? Because I think what made it so easy for me to stay on track and to eat how I was eating, because I felt like surgery was right around the corner. She 100% thinks that surgery is the easy way out. As much as she knows that it's going to be difficult after she's had the surgery to try and program her brain into this different way of eating, she sees it being, oh, I've got a couple of months, I'll just not binge for a couple of months, I'll have my surgery, and then it's all sorted. That's scary, and thank goodness they're not going to do the surgery yet. I just feel like everything came crumbling down, and I don't know how else to explain it besides, like, my mindset has changed. That's the best way to put it. I still want weight loss surgery. Absolutely. And I would love to have it in a year from now. I just feel like it's something else I failed at because I promised myself I would get it. Before the summer or even in the summer, I promised myself that. You really do know how to focus on the negative, don't you? You're still going to get it. 
you've got in your head that you're going to get it so you need to do it and you need to make yourself do whatever it takes to get this surgery done just because it's not as soon as you thought oh well at least it's going to be the safer option and you're mentally going to be ready to handle it i don't see how once again somebody that's this privileged is still able to focus on the bad every single time and i feel like i promised you guys that as well that's clearly not happening and now there's just like such a big gap of time for me to just fail there's so many days to fail so many hours, so many minutes, so many seconds. And that scares me. More proof that you're definitely not ready. A lot of you are going to be like, she didn't even want the surgery. And, you know, it's so crazy because I wanted the surgery so bad that that's all my channel has been. That's all my life has been, even off of YouTube. And so there are freaking haters out there who think I still don't want the surgery. Thanks, exaggeration, Lynn. Um, sorry, how long, is it, how, how long has this been your life for the last few months? And you're pissed off that people might be a bit dubious to believe that you actually want this? Can you not understand? Why people are so frustrated with you because you say one thing and do another. Well done for sticking to something that you said you were going to do and you actually did. Unfortunately, results don't always go the way you want. But this is still a good result. Ten months down the line, you're going to be in a position, hopefully, where you can completely change your life. you just got to put the work in. It's mind-blowing. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. When I tell you I broke down, after that appointment, I had a fucking anxiety attack. Like a full-fledged anxiety attack. I know what you're trying to do. You're obviously trying to get everyone to care about the fact that, you need, you know, and like see that this really is something that you really want and you're going to put everything into it and the fact that you couldn't get it, it really broke you. And I get that, but I don't understand how you're not getting it. These doctors, these dietitians, these therapists, they're all there to help you. And you're fortunate enough to have advice at your fingertips. I don't understand how you can get annoyed at people who have seen you fail again and again and again. And just because... You had an anxiety attack that doesn't prove anything i get it i get it someone with a binge eating disorder can really hurt themselves after surgery i get it but i don't have issues binging you don't have issues binging for the last two months i've never had those types of issues like eating three times the amount you normally would i've never had that and it's just like i don't know it just sucks i just feel kind of defeated so she finishes it up with just saying that she's going to stick to what she's been doing she's going to keep walking she's going to keep um eating better and keeping an eye on her food and um that she's just going to start doing vlogs again soon you know just a, just the same thing that she usually does basically i hope you enjoyed that i don't tend to really cover amber but um i thought it was something that most people that are aware of her would like to know um I've, i i don't know i find it really hard to watch her i i do have times when i really do feel sorry for the girl but she's just so infuriating i just don't understand feels like any little thing that she can get upset about she's going to whereas if she looks at the bigger picture her life is actually going to be pretty fucking good if she sticks to what she says she's going to do so anyways uh yeah this definitely wasn't five minutes like i first intended it to be so i'm sorry about that but i will see you all again soon